Okay, do you mind if we change topics? Yeah, I still want to get back to the reasons why things fall. Um, I've just explained that. This, relative this whole density. density thing is completely wrong. Okay. Yes, folks, by popular demand, we're revisiting the debate between Anthony Riley and Craig from Fight the Flat Earth. Now the rules for this episode are the same as the last one. Every time Riley misquotes George Muser and says, Einstein breaks the wand of Newton, and it's appropriate, you need to take a drink. Now just as a quick update on that article, we contacted the author, physicist George Muser, and asked him about the way Riley was misusing his phrase. Here's his response. Now in this part of the debate, Riley discusses the use of buoyancy and density as a substitute for gravity using this particular illustration. So let's cue up the music and learn a little bit about density and buoyancy. From Mr. Independent Variable himself, Anthony Riley, and Craig from Fight the Flat Earth. Okay, but we can demonstrate it though. Have you not seen Nick from Phuket Words um, uh, Egg demonstration in <laughs> yeah, Salt Water? Yeah, that was brilliant comedy. Right. Apparently, this is in reference to a video by Phuket Word, where he used the example of an egg to say you could weigh an egg but not weigh the earth. Really, I don't get it either because you can use the weight of that egg to weigh the earth. But that's another video. I'll put the link to it in the description. Right. Yeah. L let me let me explain the simple problem with your density thing, Anthony. There's a pressure gradient in our atmosphere going from 14.7 psi to zero psi. If you yeah. are asserting that things fall because the density difference, then they would go to the path of least resistance where things are less dense. Okay, hold it there, Craig, old buddy, old pal. First, what you'd have to do is you're starting to build an argument here, and that is that you want to make the argument that things go from more dense to less dense. Give Anthony a chance to agree to it before you spring your trap, because if you spring your trap before he agrees to it, all he has to do is say, no, that's not what I meant. I have no idea where your logic comes into that, but let me explain it to you simply. An object will find its equilibrium if it's free to do so. They all do it. That's why gas, that's why hot what, water What's cold. the equilibrium? Why, why is it going down? It's relative to the medium it's in. Yeah, so but why is example, it going down? Where's the vector coming from? Okay, so the, vec the vector is caused by the density, the medium itself. So let me show you on screen. Bear with me one sec. Okay, that was kind of a premature spring by Craig, so Anthony easily dodged that. Now he's changing the subject over to this density concept. Using this illustration of a density tower, he's going to say that each of those layers has a natural level that it will seek, independent of any outside force. All right, so this is a good citation I use frequently. Um, have you seen this before? Right, um, oh, yeah, right, the density tower, yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll take the uh, cherry tomato that's in the middle, just because yep. it's in the middle and it's a solid. Now, what we can do is we can use any of these layers, liquid layers, and we can give them a value, right? We can call them numbers. We can call them anything that denotes like a, a rank. So you can call it, say, six, and then not put units to it. Or you could put units to it, and we can call it unicorns. But we... Now, it appears as though Anthony is just being flippant here. But he's not. He's actually setting something up here, and I don't know if Craig is noticing it. Now, density actually has a meaning. It's mass per unit volume. Each of those layers can be described properly by citing its mass per unit volume. But what Anthony is very subtly doing here, and Craig's not picking up on it, is Anthony is introducing the idea that numbers and units and such are all simply arbitrary. We can call them whatever we want. Now what he's going to try and do is the same thing he did with mathematics in the first part of this debate. He's setting it up to be dismissed at a later time. Dismissed because density and mathematics and such are not reality. So let's let them carry on and see what they do with this. It. Let's give the cherry tomato, say, five. And the medium above it is four, and the medium below it is six. We know that that cherry tomato finds its equilibrium at the state five that we've called five. No, it's a density gradient, Craig. Yeah, and what's it caused by? The density itself, the, all the relative densities relative What's to density? themselves. 
the, the amount of matter in an object. It's density of force. Okay, here Craig does a lot better. He's allowed Anthony to paint himself into a corner, and then he asks the key question, and he's shutting up and letting Anthony answer. Now here Anthony is being forced to put the noose around his own neck by answering this question. It clearly is a force. You're literally <laughs> looking at it. You're literally looking at it right now, Craig. Hey, Anthony. Boom. -a. Density is a physical property of mass per unit volume. There is no force involved. There is no vector involved. And this is a sixth grade science question. It's literally right. this equilibrium. Here's the problem, Anthony. What you're saying yeah. is so silly because there is actually no vector. Why does that thing decide? Why do those layers decide to go in that particular order? What is telling those layers that they need to sit on those density um, sections. What is telling so, that cherry tomato to go to the particular level of density that it needs to? You are missing the vector. Density is not a force. That is the funniest no, no. thing I have ever heard. Now in this exchange, Craig has forced Anthony to admit he has absolutely no idea what density is. By forcing Anthony to actually explain things to the best of his knowledge, he exposed Anthony as a scientific illiterate that knows less about density than he does about triangles. Now, at this point, Anthony's only defense is to double down. Really? Yeah. So the vector, the vector comes from the fact that the dish, uh, the cherry tomato is given the we, the value that we call density is five. The medium above it's four. The one below it is six. That that is where the vector comes from. It's relative okay, but density. Okay, why are those layers in that order? Why indeed? Let's see what Anthony says. Because of their own density. Why is one density sitting on top of the other and not below it? What makes those densities because decide to be in that order? Do you understand what the phrase ipso facto means? Stop straw man and answer the question. It means by that very fact. The right. density comes and from by that its very own fact, density. You are missing the entire point, Anthony. Those so he doubled down, got hammered again, and his only defense, his only explanation of this is because that's the way it is. As stated earlier, Craig is forcing Anthony to prove that he knows nothing about density. And Anthony is allowing himself to be led right down the path. Anthony, those densities, no. those layers of density, they need a force to be there. No, 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 they don't yes, need a force they do. to be there. The, they just, just need to be in a density, state. Right, you just described density as a force, and now you're saying it doesn't need a force. So which is it? No, no, no. Now Craig is skillfully turning Anthony's arguments back on him. Not only is he forcing him to backpedal, he'll soon set him up to show that he doesn't even know what a force is. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not. I'm saying that these are, density towers... Come on. <laughs> no, listen, these density towers that we can create all have relative density to them. By virtue of that fact, ipso facto, is where you get the segregation from. You're you know, Anthony, in 40 years of doing science, I've never used the term ipso facto as a reason something happened. You should really save that for court. But then again, from what I hear, your courtroom experience is about the same as your experience with triangles and density. From your claim that it's not got a vector is false. No, it's you believe not because that. those densities need a reason to be in those layers. Yeah, the reason is density, Craig. You're literally the looking at it on screen. Density isn't a force. Yeah. Okay, so the argument here is that density occurs because of density. For an extra bonus, what kind of reasoning is that called? Yeah, it clearly is. It's a disequilibrium it, force. No, you're you wrong. There is no f density. Well, is in your force, opinion, and it's it, simple it, as that. Den in your you, opinion, but no, when not you my opinion. In a fact, in the universe, density no, no. density is mass per unit volume. That's what density is. That's all. Yeah. There's no so force what? in there. So well, since you like definitions, Riley, here's a definition for you. There's the definition of density. Although we're discussing the second definition, you may want to have a look at that first one because I think the third one down describes you pretty well. So it doesn't matter, Craig. The point is, you're saying that I'm wrong, right? Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm telling you exactly why you're you're wrong. Well, your reason that for density, doing so is because those, that density tower could not exist without gravity. Gravity is the Bullshit. reason that density tower is there. Now, what Craig's going to do here is he's going to demonstrate that buoyancy cannot exist in absence of gravity or a downward acceleration. 
This is very clearly demonstrated by the fact bubbles don't rise in water in zero gravity. All right. Um, if you have two pressure transducers at opposite ends of a vertical sealed pipe, why is the pressure greatest at the bottom? Probably because of the weight of the fucking t the air in the tube and above what's it. Weight? What's weight? Oh, are you going to go with this, the mathematical definition or the real no, the world? The, the actual definition of how we can figure out what weight is. All right, so so let us I'll change the word weight then to mass, the mass of the air no, above no, it. No, sorry, but they're different things. Cause... No, Anthony, the definition of weight, which is mass times the force of gravity. Weight is in newtons, mass is in kilograms. I was using the word weight in its colloquial sense, but you're asking me to define it mathematically, which has got little g in it, and I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say well, then, Anthony, you would be wrong, because the definition of weight does contain little g, because that's a determinant of weight. Now, this is a typical tactic that Anthony and Flat Earthers use. They cherry-pick these definitions to suit their needs, and they refuse to accept the real definitions because they don't support their narrative. If you want another example of this, look at Flat Earth Perspective. This is a made-up version of perspective, and they refuse to accept actual perspective. I'm going to say it's the mass of the, air, the column of air above it. That's the answer. Right, okay, so why is the air above it pressing down? Because it's more dense than the air that it sits in. No, the air above it is less dense. Yeah, so it's more dense than the air. That's why it's pushing down. Why? What's why? The, what's why? The, why, is, why is anything pushing down? What's the definition of down in this? In this? In gravity? Now, here is a good example of when you are cornered, change the subject, or more importantly, try to uh, confuse the subject. Now, I think before we go any further, we should take a moment and reflect on what the term down means. Now this is actually a triple example of this entire discussion. The first one is a demonstration of how far Anthony and the Flat Earth will go to try and confuse things to make their point. The second is that no matter how you define a word like down, we all, even children, have an excellent sense of what down means and what direction is down. The final thing, and the thing that's most pertinent to the last discussion that we had, was that no matter how you define gravity, we can actually measure and give a vector to the effects of gravity. Now, the next thing you may want to do is find a five-year-old somewhere and ask them to point down. Then we're going to have Anthony describe what he thinks down is. If you want to talk about down, for us, it's towards our feet. Towards your feet? Yeah, down. Anthony, we all know what down means. Well, hang on. There's an issue with the word down, Craig, because th if you're going to use the word down, I need to know in which context are you using it. I am using because the it word... as in down is towards Earth. Right. Center of the mass. Yeah. We, I, I didn't want to use that because I knew we'd have a problem. I'm trying to keep right, it but... in terms that we can both agree with that down is towards the Earth. You know, we, right, don't, the we problem... don't have to talk about center of masses right now. All we have to yeah, agree that down is, say, from your head to your feet. Yeah, but the problem is if we agree that down is from your head to your feet, you're applying that down is like relative to Earth. Here's the problem. I've already demonstrated several times, and I know that you don't accept it, but I'm still going to stand by it, that, that Newtonian principles are gone in terms of this gravitational discussion that we're having. Um, it's been replaced by Einstein. I know that you don't agree with it, but that is the current science. The problem we have with Einsteinian is that down is defined by the direction in which time passes more slowly, according to Einstein, which is the current science. So if you're going to claim that there is a down and you're going to say it's towards Earth or your head or your feet subjectively or whatever, I'm going to say that that's not even the current science either. I'm going to say that down's defined by the direction in which time passes more slowly. So in this context, that's Einsteinian that replaced the what snapped the wand in two. What on there it is. Take a drink. Two. What on earth are you talking about when you say down? OK, if you're talking about the time going slower, that's all to do with time dilation with gravity. So I I'm still talking yeah, about the same thing. But, yeah, but we are talking about gravity still, are we not? Yes, we are. Um, right, so down is I am just talking the about the time. basicness of down right now. Yeah. Right? But and we all, the... we all know what down is, all right? Yeah, but no, no, um, no, no, we right, don't. We sorry, don't, because you think it's to the... Yes, we do know what down is. It's down. 
So what is down in the context of gravity? Is it down towards your feet, like you said, subjectively? Or is it actually, according to the science, down as defined by the direction in which time passes more slowly? The same thing. Let me help you out there, big boy. That's down. No, they're not. They they're are. not. One's Newtonian, one's Einsteinian, and one's mathematical. When you talk no. about physics and how we can calculate and measure things, down no, is no, down. No, no, listen, listen, here's another thing. Time's a concept. It's a man-made construct, right? It's not real world. Mm. So we... Okay, so first you don't know which way is down. Now, if you want to say that increments of time are a construct or an artificial thing, I'll agree with that. I mean, there's nothing natural about seconds. But time itself is a real thing. Now recall that this entire conversation here is based on the fact that Anthony was cornered on density. Now he's trying to raise questions about what definition we'll use for down and time. Now the point that needs to be hammered home here is, Anthony, I really don't care what you, definition you use for down and time. Down is still down and time still passes. Their existence does not depend on you for your approval or your definition. And in both cases, they are natural events. We are simply using words to describe what we observe in nature. World. Mm, so we go back to the... No, time isn't a man-made concept. The measurement of time units is um, a man-made way of describing yeah. time. But time the is not with a concept. Relying on time... time is a dimension. Right, so, it's still a conceptual thing that man's made, right? And we're still, no, still no, going to no, try no, no. and rely it's not. on... Time isn't a conceptual thing that man has made. What we've done is, is we have um, just we have figured out how to measure and break down time into units. Uh, now, for people that lack understanding, they must rely on definitions, such as Anthony here. There are a number of definitions that can be used for time, and here they are. Now, Anthony is not just being obtuse or ignorant here. Now, recall at the beginning of the video, Anthony tried to make units of density appear to be arbitrary and easily disposable. Just as he did in uh, the earlier video where he tried to narrowly define the independent variable to require that the investigator personally manipulate it or it wasn't science. By selecting obscure and very restrictive definitions of simple concepts like time and down, it gives him an opportunity to declare that they're pseudoscience as well. This allows him to dismiss out of hand any proofs that use them. So space-time, let's go back to the definition of space-time. Uh, space-time is any mathematical model, right? I don't need to go any further. So Really? Now remember that Anthony set this up at the beginning of the first video. He tried to make the premise that anything that involved math wasn't reality. Now surprisingly, he took a poll on his performance after this debate and what his next move should be and read the results off as percentages. I'm sure that he understands the concept of a tax rate and how that impacts his wages. And even if he doesn't follow American baseball, I'm sure he understands what I mean when I say that his batting average in court appears to be zero for three. Ever get that commercial driver's license, big guy? So time is mathematical by nature, but you're going to use it in this context of gravity and I'm going to say, but you're still reverting back to Newtonian principles where you're going to use defi try and define down as towards the center of your feet or from, a, from your head or whatever. That's because but we've Newtonian got... physics is perfectly simple, it's perfectly acceptable to describe no. things that we see and measure because no, we can Greg, still not. use the equation F equals GM1 M2 over R squared to calculate everything in the universe and the reason why it's moving. We can still so, measure a downward acceleration. Again, Anthony, you are arguing semantics when we both know what down means. All right? We no, both know what no, down means. No, no, no. Means. You don't know what down means. That's like, my we, point. We do. Down, down is means the direction in which time travels more slowly according to the current science as defined by Einstein. Yep, and you're going to redefine that, it as that up is to your because feet. Because of, of time dilation. And that is, that is a fact. That, that actually happens. Time goes slower the closer you are to gravity. But down can also be described as a direction when we are talking about it. And we know that things fall down towards yeah. the Earth. Let's have a look at this term right here, opsification. Do you think Riley is attempting to simply confuse this issue or clarify it? Are his comments useful or is he avoiding things? 
No, not towards the Earth, in the direction in which time travels more slowly, according to the current yeah, okay. science. And we're going to say that that is Earth. OK, we know that down. No, we're not going to say that's Earth. That's going against what Einstein says. Einstein clearly states it's that not. it's the direction. Again, which... again, you are trying to completely separate Newtonian physics and Einsteinian physics when that's not how it works. They knew Einstein. He expanded on the knowledge of Newton. He figured no, he out didn't. that Newton was wrong about a lot no, of things. No, he didn't. Because it Einstein isn't snapped. just an invisible force. No, Craig. But we Einstein can measure it as a Craig. force because there is an acceleration. Nope. Craig, no. Yes, Einstein Anthony, snapped. I'm sorry, but you are completely missing right, the I've entire point. I've muted him for the purposes of my audience. He's clearly wrong. It literally says on screen that he snapped the wand in two by showing... There it is. Take a drink. ...by showing the curvature of space-time and not an invisible force. He did not add to it. He did and not... I've already explained it. to you he that, yes... Into and showed... One more time. There it is. And showed um, that it the was, curvature uh, of space-time uh, is space what causes the non-locality of things to change. This guy refuses to accept it, and it is the pivotal point for why he's pushing bullshit science that's antiquated, and according to the current science, it's Einstein, right? Not my problem he doesn't accept it, but you've literally got the current science on screen right now. Where do we go from here? <sighs> you are... Did you read the entire article, Anthony? Because you yeah, clearly I read it didn't beforehand times. when you said you skipped through it. Yeah, that was for the purposes of your video. I've read this a hundred times. What else is there in this article that you don't think I've got right? Again, that article is someone's opinion about things. Right, so that you're saying that a PhD level scientist is wrong and some bloke on the... I'm not saying that he's wrong, but I'm saying that you should not use a scientific American paper or, or, or article to try and prove anything. I'm not I, trying Einstein to prove something. Einstein attributed the curvature of... Oh, no, Craig, the, Craig, sorry, wait, Craig, I'm Einstein not attributed the, the reason why things fall to the curvature of space-time. Craig, right, listen, I'm not going to deny that. Yes, something. you can say he snapped the wand in two because... Feel the brain cells dying yet? Take a drink. Two ...because he figured out that Newton was wrong. Because it's not be clear. just an invisible Craig. force. Craig, listen. Let's be clear. I'm not trying to prove anything other than show that you are antiquated with your so-called science and you don't accept the current Einsteinian science. I, and I, I do don't it. give a shit. I, <laughs> and so I don't give a shit which way round it is. You keep trying to separate the two and that's not what happens. Right? You keep what? missing the entire point of everything. Um, now, this is a pretty classic technique from Flat Earth. It doesn't matter how many times you explain it to them correctly. They will maintain their narrative. They have to stay on point, or else their entire concept collapses. Um, oh, right, really? Answer me this then. What, what would cause the curvature of space-time? It's a mathematical concept. It doesn't have a cause. It's not <laughs> empirical by nature. The curvature of space-time doesn't have a cause. That's another... F the amount of clips I'm getting from this is brilliant. Right. Yeah. Now, once again, Anthony has no concept of what space-time is, or how to calculate it, or even the interaction between Einstein and Newton. He's misapplying a quote uh, about breaking the wand. Don't, that doesn't count. Now he's going back to his original position that if it's mathematics, it's not real. How this makes any sense to him, I don't know. Right, yeah, that's uh, right. So take this. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. For that little jib there, I'm going to just literally speak over you. Theoretical <laughs> physics is pointless without experimental tests. A mathematical construct, Craig, cannot give you experimental tests because it doesn't have any application in experiments. It's maths. It's mathematical construct. And look who just happens to be on the leading, like the poster child for this. Bloody Einstein. So if you're going to tell me that I missed the point, respectfully, Craig, I'm going to ask you to demonstrate exactly where I've missed my point. Because we can still measure it as a force. And there you have it. This is the original argument that he made in the first part of this video. Recall that the entire basis of his argument is built on sand, basically. The first concept is that if it's mathematics, it is not real. If it's theoretic physics, it is not real. The second concept is that Einstein replaced Newtonian physics exclusively. It was one or the other. So his entire argument is elegantly simple. Newton supported gravity. Einstein replaced Newton and invalidated it. Since Einstein is theoretical physics based on mathematics, it is invalidated. So therefore, there is no such thing as gravity.
You know, when I was growing up, I rode my bike everywhere. As I became an adult, I started getting a car. Well, the car replaced my bike. However, if my car breaks down, does that mean that I have to walk? No, I can ride a bike. The bike still works. Riley is promoting the concept that if the car breaks down, you can't use the bike, so therefore you're stuck because the car replaced the bike. It makes no sense. Einstein even said that it is no. measurable as a force. He no, said Einstein that it did wasn't, not say that. Wait, wait, wait. That's he bullshit. said that it wasn't. Right. Citation. He Citation, said that it I've... wasn't a. It wasn't just an invisible. It wasn't an invisible force. It is the curvature of space time. Yeah, he said. He specifically but, said it was not an invisible force. Yes. So why I, would I Einstein? Why you. are you it's saying not an invisible force? But it matters. Yeah. So you're saying within that he the Newtonian physics, still measure it as within a force. the universe that we it can see and understand as an acceleration. An acceleration okay. requires a force. That is a physical fact that you only according deny. to Newton. Only according to Newton. No, I'm pretty sure Einstein knew that acceleration required a force. Well, he snaps that. What? Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. Say what one more goddamn time. Right. That can't be true because his mathematical construct for gravity doesn't require a force. Do you understand that? It's mathematical. Philosophic, philosophical at best. Not philosophical at all. It's an explanation of why there is an apparent force. All right, well, it definitely is theoretical physics, though, isn't it? It doesn't have experimental application. Okay, once again, he gets backed into a corner by Craig, so he changes the subject to something else and makes this sweeping statement that theoretical physics can't be experimented upon or confirmed by experimentation. He's just playing a little dodgeball here. So application? Um, you mean Einstein's um, explanation of space-time? Correct. It doesn't have experimental application. Um. Now, the reason that he's employing this experimental evidence rule is that he started this entire debate off with something very specific. Craig asked him directly what evidence he would accept as scientific. And he said, anything that follows the scientific method. Notice that he didn't give an answer to Craig's question. He answered the question with a definition, which was left open. He then has the ability to go back and change that definition to suit the circumstances of the specific evidence that he has given. Recall as well that he has a very restrictive definition of what scientific method is. And he attempts to apply that to everything, including measurements. Now, one of the key features of that scientific method is the independent variable, which he insists can, must be manipulated and can only be manipulated by the examiner. Using that definition, everything that is an observational science, such as, say, astronomy, cannot be a science. Things that rely on natural occurrence, such as seismology, cannot be a science because the examiner is not placing the earthquakes. And obviously, theoretical physics is not a science because it involves mathematics. Well, I would disagree with that because we you are would. able to actually see the difference in um, so go on then how are you going to demonstrate wait, 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 wait. Um, I'm, I'm trying to formulate my thought here all right um, well while you're formulating answer me this what in your thought process how now he asked craig a complicated question and craig is attempting to formulate an answer so anthony interrupts him craig says that he's attempting to gather his thoughts so what does anthony do respectfully allow him a moment so that he can come up with a cohesive answer no, he interrupts him again and gives him a second question. Yes. How are we going to demonstrate the bending of space-time? What is space-time? Space-time is the fabric of the universe. No. It's... Now listen to Anthony's response here. Rather than try to learn something about this subject and discuss it intelligently, he'll misapply quotes, as he is known to do, and try and derail the conversation. No, it's a mathematical model, Craig. So how yeah, does a mathematical model have... It's a mathematical model, model with the fabric of the universe that we can use to make predictions. Right, a mathematical model doesn't have any application in experimental, um, uh, experimental tests. Right. 
Now, theoretical physics or any predictive science makes predictions. We can test those predictions by seeing if they turn out to be able to actually predict things. Such an experiment was done in 1919 by Sir Arthur Eddington. The specific goal of this experiment was to confirm or refute a prediction made by Einstein's theory of relativity in reference to the bending of light by gravitational fields. Einstein made a prediction, Eddington constructed an experiment during a total eclipse of the sun to measure whether those predictions were accurate or not. They were found to be accurate and Einstein's theory of relativity was confirmed. Now it should be noted that this was a true experiment. There was a dependent variable, specifically the location of stars in relationship to each other. And there was an independent variable, which was the presence or the absence of the mass of the sun. This satisfies the requirement that an independent variable be varied and the dependent variable be the measurement device to see a change. In the fantasy world of flat earth, this does not qualify as an experiment because Eddington did not personally move the sun into position to exert a gravitational field on the starlight coming in from those stars. It's quite clear that the purpose that the flat earthers use to make this severe restriction on the scientific method is not to protect the validity of the science, but to dismiss the results of the science. Yeah, but again, it still lacks experimental uh, application. Mathematical um, I think the people not... at CERN would disagree with you there. Why? Why would you think that? You cited Einstein before as saying that force would be required, right? And now you're citing CERN as people at CERN would disagree with me. What's your citation for that then? Well, the fact that CERN is actually breaking down particles to try and figure out, you know, what the fabric of the universe is. All right, that's a lovely story. What evidence have you got that CERN would disagree with Anthony Riley on, on Sleeping Warrior on YouTube? Obviously, you've got none. CERN, so, you know what CERN does, right? They smash particles together to... Allegedly. Allegedly, right. Okay, that humongous thing is just there doing nothing. Yes, right. So what is CERN going to prove to us, right? Come on, CERN, what's CERN, CERN going to prove? CERN prove how... Um, well, in fact, it has proven that um, a Higgs field is a thing. <sighs> Lovely story. What's that? Right, I'll give you CERN. You can have CERN. I'm not interested in CERN. Like That's referred to as a brush off. Unfortunately, by waving his hand and giving him CERN, he admits to everything that CERN has done. Just like in the first video, where he waved off Cavendish and said, you could have Cavendish, derpa, derpa, derpa. Well, that's fine. Then with Cavendish, you get all of the results of Cavendish, including gravity, big G, little g, the mass of the Earth, the density of the Earth. And when he hand-waved off the Apollo landings on the moon, derpa, 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 well, that's great. Now you have acknowledged the presence of space. You have acknowledged space flight. You have acknowledged that man has been in space with cameras. And with that, you acknowledge the fact that pictures of the Earth are real. LIGO, gravitational waves, detection of gravitational waves. Yep. Is that science or is that pseudoscience? That's science. It's How is it science? This is LIGO. It's an interferometer four kilometers on a side. This interferometer confirmed the presence of gravitational waves. That was the final piece of evidence to confirm the theory of relativity, the first being Eddington with the bending of light due to gravitational forces. Well, folks, as fun as this is, it's been 35 minutes and there's still another hour of this to go. If you'd like, I'll make a, one or two more videos on it. But in the meantime, this is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. Thank you for stopping by and seeing some of these techniques, maybe learning a little bit from them. And remember to like and subscribe to my channel. This rabbit hole's too deep for me. Feel my brain getting real sore.